Anything about Joanne Glasser, though? That, you know, that's your retirement? Glasser, I, of course, I was here, I guess, her first two years. Uh, probably I would sum up her tenure in one word, instability. Uh, even though uh, I think that Custra did uh, make some changes in administrator, uh, administrative level, uh, I do recall that uh, Glasser had four provosts in a very short period of time. She did this with some of the deans. Uh, I do know several people who uh, disagreed with things she said and they were cut off at the knees when that happened. Uh, I, I know at least I could name you a dozen retired faculty who said they would never give a nickel to Eastern as long as she remained president. And I'm happy to say that under the new president, all 12 of those people are giving money again. Mm -hmm. uh, I think she alienated a lot of people uh, with her ego. Uh, and of course, that was ripe at times. But I, I think Doug Whitlock, uh, who I remembered fondly from earlier times, has been the breath of fresh air. He's been the healing ointment that was so needed here. And uh, he has reached out to faculty. I've always thought that anyone that goes through a system uh, remains very faithful to that system. And I think it's genuine sincerity on his part. He loves EKU yeah. uh, more than anyone, maybe even Dr. Martin. And uh, I think he will do his very best, and I hope his health holds out and he can serve these additional three years. It's, it's interesting that you described him as a, as a breath of fresh air, and, and this is the Doug Whitlock that we've known That's for, right. for, uh, yes. <laughs> for 35 years or so. And of course, you know, one, one thing that happened is, I, th I think, advantageous to him and to us was that he was gone for two yeah. or three years. That's right. Uh, of course, in that time, he became the chair of the Madison County Board of Education, True. so he was he was involved in education. But and and then he comes back, and he, truly, it's like a new a new Doug Whitlock in many ways. But it's also a lot of the old Doug Whitlock. I mean, it's just it's just such a it's it's just an incredible kind of transformation. I think that the campus has undergone oh, under him. Uh, and as almost everybody who I've asked this question says. Uh, he was the the very president we needed at the time that True. that he the times came in. make the man yeah yeah um, well last question Hank and I sure appreciate all of your insights they're, they're really very perceptive uh, but um, the question I've been asking everybody over the thirty or thirty five years that you can remember how has EKU changed in significant ways how has it stayed the same. Let me say it stayed the same uh, in a couple of very good uh, instances. Uh, one is that even though enrollment, which was once upon a time 3,000, has mushroomed uh, during this period that we were involved at EKU, we still have a small college atmosphere. The classes remain 25 to 30 students. Uh, professors, if they wish and the students wish, still enjoy a personal relationship. I went to the flagship school in Lexington and even in the 50s, I had classes with 200 students uh, at UK. This is not education. Yeah. I, I taught classes in Louisiana of 150. That's not education. So I think the personal, the small, uh, close relationships uh, that faculty and students enjoy is probably the most redeeming uh, feature. Uh, I think the let, emphasis on teaching. Let me just interject <laughs> and I want you to yes. continue there, but uh, uh, I don't think the students at Eastern realize how, how unusual it is for a freshman level course mm -hmm. to be taught by a full professor. That's right. In most large universities, that those courses be taught by graduate students. And, uh, and, you know, you get a good education here from day one, and I think that's very significant. I think that personal relationship's very good. Uh, I do, and I should have mentioned this earlier, the library, and I'm on the board of the Friends of the Library. We have a first-class library. 
It has expanded considerably since you and I came in 1970. And I should have mentioned uh, Funderburk in particular was able to uh, expand the building structure. Uh, Dr. Marsha Myers, who was the head of the library, was a very fine person. But we actually have one of the largest regional libraries anywhere <laughs> in this area. And I think that is a great asset to the students. Uh, the new technology uh, that's being housed in the library also makes it easier for the students to do more independent work on their own. So I think the library is another uh, good quality. Uh, you ask about changes. One of the reasons I retired <laughs> a little early uh, was due to the new technology. I simply got frustrated. I did not want to ever teach an online uh, class. Uh, I had problems even turning my grades in by computer and sometimes had to go get the secretary or student to help me. Um, I do think that there is less collegiality now among faculty in part because the emphasis is uh, on publication, maybe even more than teaching uh, for the period we were here. Uh, you go, if you come to campus, you go down a hallway, the door of a faculty office is halfway shut, and you will see a, a faculty member on the internet, and even when I occasionally will knock on the door, I can tell that I'm bothering <laughs> a former colleague, and so uh, it's not conducive to the socializing that we enjoyed in our time period. Very significant. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's one of the big changes, and I think that's a loss. I, I think the online classes are good. I understand uh, the value of them. I understand the economic argument. But there's nothing that helps a student more than direct contact with a teacher. And I, I hope we don't ever lose that I here. I do, too. I do, too. I think that's one of the, the great changes. Well, Dr. Hank Everman, um, as always, it's just a pleasure to talk to you, I and I appreciate your, your insights. Uh, you really gave us a very good view of EKU then and now and, and always, and uh, that's why we had you here, and you, you certainly exceeded any expectations I had. So uh, thank you very much, and thank you for watching EKU Then and Now. Please join us again on our next program.